Later today at 9.30pm GMT, I shall be doing a stream responding to Prime Minister's questions over on the Cthulhu Kin and Friends show. Link below. Now before I start today's video, which is of all things a response video, I thought I'd take the opportunity to reply to the general consensus with regards to yesterday's video. You see, there was a big divide. It wasn't just down the middle. There were several different positions. Some believing that I was right. Others taking the position that one should not teach sex ed of any kind until a kid is in their late teens. An argument not agreed upon by quite a number of people. There is obviously a contentious issue when you should talk about that. However, and I should have been clearer, civil rights is not the same thing as sex ed. It is quite possible in the video I was not clear enough about teaching civil rights when it comes to LGBT communities and the No Outsider program, and having conflated that with sex ed which created the divide. Others siding with the parents, and others saying that I am simply wrong and unsubscribing. To the 15 people that left, bye, I did notice. If I was wrong, then actually I'm more than happy to admit that. I'm not one of those arrogant types that when proven wrong by somebody, simply doubles down on what I believe, because being proven wrong means the only way to get out of it is to dig the hole deeper. If I am wrong, and it is wrong to teach kids about civil rights early, then I'm wrong. Since I'm not a parent, I look at this as an outsider, and I don't see an issue in teaching kids about differences in people, and the rights people have, and the rights that people should have. But as I've stated already, I could be wrong in my interpretation, and I'm more than happy to admit that. Now that I've gotten that out of the way, we, as I stated earlier, are doing a response video to a video posted onto Twitter by the BBC about the privilege of being thin. I may need to go and dust off the old format, because I don't actually remember how I'm supposed to do this. Thin privilege. Now, it's not a mythical creature or something made up. If you're thin, you have a certain privilege. Oh, would you look at that? Somebody conflating personal choice with responsibility, or dismissing responsibility and deciding that personal choice is in and of itself a privilege. Have I got that right? Doesn't matter really, does it? If you're fat, you've chosen to be fat. Unless you have a medical condition that makes it impossible for you to be able to maintain a healthier lifestyle, i.e. disability, wheelchairs typically are those things that help inability to work out, maybe arthritis, I'd excuse it under those circumstances. There are further ones, thyroid issues, of course, them dreaded thyroid issues. There are others, and the list is quite extensive. But I don't believe it is a privilege to be thin, or that you have privilege over other people because it is easier for you to buy clothes that fit because you are living a healthier life. That's not a privilege, that is a consequence. You are conflating privilege and consequence, that's what I should have said. You can tell I've not done a response video in a while. I am confused by words. So everyday tasks that a thinner person can take for granted. I can leave a plus size person like myself feel full of anxiety, burden, etc. Yeah, but your feelings don't matter. It is, as earlier stated, a consequence of your choices. You, in this instance, have made a conscientious decision to eat too much and not do enough to look after your body. As a consequence of that, you are highly likely to suffer from many different debilitating conditions as you get older. You will undoubtedly die younger than somebody who is healthier. That is statistically pretty much a certainty at this point. Let's exclude the freak accidents that occur. You are more than likely going to have to pay more to live. And you will eventually, if you don't look after yourself, become a burden on the taxpayer. And I use that particular turn of phrase as it is quite common amongst people who look at fat people or people who are grossly or morbidly obese, and recognise that that person is eventually going to require round-the-clock care, numerous pills and prescriptions for things they have brought upon themselves and not been proactive at tackling themselves, or with a support network that does in fact exist if you're proactive enough to go and look for it. Believe it or not, communities aren't entirely dead yet. And feelings that they don't belong and don't deserve a place in the air. It's quite possible I should just restate the earlier comment of fuck your feelings. How you feel about belonging on this earth is not exclusive to being big. It is a case that people feel isolated for many different reasons. Being fat, though, can be tackled. Accepting you are fat is one thing. 
expecting society to accept it, though. Different matter entirely. It is not healthy. It is not normal. It should not be normalised. It is excess and selfishness. Incarnate. Unless you have a medical condition. In which case, I have nothing to add. So, public transport. What a nightmare for plus-size people. Just think. Can you sit in a seat and not be met with sighs, huffing, puffing, and someone squirming in a seat next to you, making you feel uncomfortable, and knowing that you, they don't want you there? Is this a Poe? Because that's quite an odd thing to pick up on. I say this because I, not somebody certainly of your size, have been on public transport many times. And in London, yeah. In big cities especially, you don't really get a chance to sit down. When you do, people do huff, they do push, they do... Well, they don't like people next to them. It's kind of like guys that go to a urinal. You don't want somebody to go up to the one between you and another guy. Because that way you've got your personal space. It's why on a bus some people put their bag on the seat next to them, because they don't want someone sat next to them. The fact you take up two seats isn't really a factor, but admittedly, on the tube where you had that little video there, people are a bit more agitated, irritable, and generally look down on people regardless of their size. Although I'd hate to be sat next to you on the tube during the summer. That place gets hot. Shopping, can you go into 99.9% .9 of the high street and shop, try on, and take an outfit away that very same day and not actually be able to go and enjoy the experience of shopping? Clearly, you've never shopped at Primark. I do want to point out in a more serious sense, there are plenty of shops appearing on the high street that do accommodate for bigger people. Yes, okay, it isn't that favoured brand, but they are there to help you. Short of that, go to one of those bed stores and buy yourself a duvet cover and poke some holes through it. Another more serious thing, I myself, while not a bigger person, have issue buying trousers that fit me, because I have very large quads from cycling. As a consequence of my legs being quite muscular, I can't find trousers that fit my waist, so I have to buy a size bigger, and even then it's a bit tight, and if I buy another size bigger than the one I've already bought... The trouser waistline has to fold in on itself with a belt, which is quite sad. Grabbing something to eat, just think, can you pop into a bakery, pick up a donut and sit there and then and enjoy it? And not feel that you've been met with stares or comments, I cannot do that. You're precious. You've yet to actually say anything that is actually exclusive to those that are fat. While I have seen predominantly slimmer people walk down a high street, certainly in my town, eating a sausage roll from the local bakery, because their sausage rolls are amazing, it is not, again, exclusive, and it's not a privilege either. To be honest, it's just what you do when you're in a rush. Why don't you go sit down on a bench, or take it home, and enjoy it like a civilised person? I'm a snob. You noticed? Going to the doctor's. Are you able to go and be seen and diagnose what is actually wrong with you? After a four to six week wait? Yes. Or the appointment turned into a weigh-in session? Well, since it's quite difficult to get an appointment with my GP, I would argue that yes, there is a weigh-in involved, but only as a checkup to see how I am doing, how my health is holding up, and how my weight is holding. It is not done as a way to assess whether or not I have gotten any fatter, merely to have a clear and accurate record just in case another doctor has to take over as my physician, or whether it is a simple case that doctors at hospital need to know this, in case they need a reinforced gurney, or to take me to the zoo to be weighed. And to be honest, I actually avoid going to the doctors now, just because I don't feel like I'm taken seriously. Two things. Number one, I do not appreciate the editing style that is similar to Riley Dennison, that you've got the voices overlapping, making it impossible for me to splice it. Second... The onus of going to a doctor is on you. If you believe something is wrong, you go to the doctor. If you don't believe you're being taken seriously, it's because you believe something is wrong when there is nothing wrong with you. I believe it's called Munchausen's. Or WebMD. Just because someone's smaller, just in the same way as someone's bigger, there's no way that you could diagnose someone's heart just by looking at them. You are wrong. I'm assuming you looked at WebMD to get this confirmation that you cannot look at somebody and observe things that may be wrong with them based on what the eye can see. I don't need to take a blood test to know you're fat. I don't need to do a CT scan to know you're fat. I do not require a medical degree or a license to practice medicine to be able to tell you that your weight can cause medical problems. 
uh, you, based on what you say to the doctor and how you appear, are good enough for a GP to be able to diagnose you as not having something wrong, but simply you overreacting to a minor thing. You wouldn't go up to a thin person or comment on pictures, listing off all the health problems that they may or may not have. Uh... Okay. Yet again, another privilege. Lol. So I can put a picture up on Instagram and I'm listed with everything that's wrong with me. Firstly, those comments you put on the screen there to make your point about Instagram came from Facebook. Second, it doesn't matter if you're big or small. You put something in the public domain and you're not just going to get praise. You are going to get criticism as well. It's called life. And how you handle that tells me more about you than the picture you put up on Instagram. Of course, none of it is true, because nothing's wrong with me. How can you be so sure of that if you don't go to a doctor? Oh, and if you didn't know already, there is one minor detail wrong with you, but it would be remarkably callous of me to tell you. But I am in just about the right mood to say it. You're really, really big. And at some point in your future, that is going to bite you on the ass. Before you roll your eyes at the idea of thin privilege, just try putting yourself in someone else's shoes. See, this idea of looking at it from someone else's perspective, to best understand them, as far as I'm concerned, is a waste of time. Because I don't care about your perspective. I'm looking at you, and listening to what you have to say, and realising you will not take responsibility for your choices. You are a, well, a child in an adult, very big, adult body, doing everything they can to not be accountable for the decisions they have made. What a remarkably stunted person you are. I'm not having a go at thin people at all, but just simply acknowledging there is the privilege that society has unfortunately put on people who are thinner. I'll tell you what, how about we negotiate this? I'll admit there's a thin privilege, if... You get on camera and admit your size is a detriment to your health and being fat isn't good and that at some point in your future you're going to have to take responsibility for your fat. Deal? Okay? Just to combat it, just acknowledge it, be accepting of anybody of any size and don't fall into what society and the media are trying to tell us that are right or wrong. Oh look at that. You found another group you could fob your responsibility off on. Well, I'm done with this. I hope you enjoyed. It is a bit of a callback to 20... I don't know, whichever year it was I last did a response video in. Whenever it was, then. I hope you all have a lovely Wednesday the 13th. Hopefully, I will see some of you over on the Cthulhu Kin and Friends show tonight for PMQs. And thank you all for listening.